So I'm going to start a new series, I don't know how regular, semi-regular series of videos on Gene Wolfe. I talk about Gene Wolfe a lot on this channel and it, it's a natural place to focus my attention for some book videos uh, just because it's something I'm interested in. And I know some people do come here to, to hear about him. Gene Wolfe is, I don't know if he's my favourite author, that's, you know, you, you think in, in fictional terms that's probably still Tolkien and, and uh, you know, perhaps Lewis um, as well for different reasons. Uh, but Wolf is up there. He's in my top 10 authors, certainly. And uh, I think the the sheer uh, depth of life in his books and of ideas and of um, character are so interesting. And this is why he is, for an author who has been significantly eclipsed, uh, in re in recent years, there's a bit of a you see this actually in his career that through the 90s he cannot buy uh, a nomination really for his books, uh, and then just into the noughties um, and toward, uh, up until his last book is 2020 actually it's posthumous, but he starts to pick up nominations again. He even gets I think one win like maybe a world fantasy, uh, but you know there was an eclipse then. But then in popular terms there's certainly uh, some sort of continued. Uh, relatively low um, low profile and there seems to be in booktube terms a, re a return of interest I mean I first read him I, we're currently rereading I'm rereading uh, others are reading for the first time the fifth head of Cerberus in my discord book group uh, but people are just getting into him um, I first read him ten years ago or so with the fifth head of Cerberus maybe nine years and then later in, in 2021 or so, I uh, moved into Book of the New Sun. And since then, I've read half of his novels and many of his short stories and some of his nonfiction. And uh, yeah, there is a, a, a rising interest. And I think that's because though he is still very niche, uh, there has been a continued interest, The Earth List uh, and the many podcasts. Remember, this is a an author who has three regular podcasts about him despite being dead and not popular and very hard to read. I'm rereading, I'm, there, there may be more, but Gene Wolfe Literary Podcast, Al Zarbo Soup, and Rereading Wolf are the three I'm thinking of. Uh, and there are many bloggers. There's an academic micro industry, and by academic, in the best sense, I actually, I don't mean academic at all. I mean, you've got uh, amateurs in the old sense, M Mark Aramini and Michael Andre Driussi, as well as Joan Gordon and other uh, academics, actual academics in university contexts. Uh, and I've read uh, and uh, listened to, I've listened to many of the podcasts and I've read many of uh, the books associated with uh, those authors, not all. Uh, it is a, a micro industry because he's such an interesting author. And uh, he's an interesting author not because, oh, I just love the worlds he creates. Or, oh, he's, uh, there was a great movie adaptation of one of his books and that's made him popular or something like that. He's a great and interesting author because he has many things to say and he says them in complex ways. By complex I don't mean needlessly complex, I mean dense uh, in the sense that there's a lot of information and he he will, he will trusts his audience's intelligence as he himself said. Uh, I, I've talked a bit about some of this density in um, the, my uh, substack uh, actually uh, in the most recent uh, newsletter uh, comparing some of the style in Fifth Head of Cerberus to Book of the uh, short Sun, which I've, I've just finished, of course. Uh, and style is thing you see develop in him. You do see some things develop. You see themes develop and things he's interested in develop. And uh, you see uh, his genre develop. You know, you think there is a period of time in the 80s, late mid 80s to the early 90s, where he writes a bunch of what can only be described as urban fantasy, quite early urban fantasy. He even writes one random crime book. Uh, he writes um, more sci-fi, perhaps, arguably, earlier on, uh, depending on how you define sci-fi, and more fantasy later on. But then actually there's a bleed. You see this actually with the, even with nominations, you see Book of the New Sun, I think, wins in fantasy, whereas Long Sun and Short Sun are nominated or win for uh, sci-fi. There's a constant bleed between genre and him, but the way he develops genre and the way he uses different genres, uh, epic fantasy and the building's roman and all these kinds of different uh, tropes and sub-tropes and so on, um, is worth consideration. Uh, he, and I, I think for me, certainly one of the big things is, I already mentioned about character and about, I think virtue, the nature of virtue and, and 
character in the moral sense in his books has to be one of the most interesting things uh, that he is both he both develops and he is consistent in both you know there's change and there's continuity in what he's interested in from uh, old and weir in, in peace uh, through to uh, the narrator of the book of um, the short sun and uh, uh, yeah all the way through to the end um, he's interested in you know it's interesting that the question is severian christ that comes up to with the book of the new sun and bull said no but he is he is a christian uh, some would say a christ figure there's certainly a, a typological thing going on there uh, but um, there is a there is a pilgrim's progress going on there and that has come across many of his books some sort of pilgrim's progress so there's so much to talk about and i think what i want to do is rather than talk uh, about through individual books you know and though i do in a way you know don't don't all, all of us who are have bees and bonnets on these niche things we want to do everything i want to uh, analyze every chapter in every book and uh, and i want to do this and i want to do that what i think i'm going to do which i think i hope will be um a valuable addition to the conversation is to discuss topics by topics i mean things like style uh things like uh, virtue uh thing things like spirituality um world building so kind of big heads it, it, it's not necessarily that um a conversation uh, will have one set or a discussion would have one set aim but would have this big heading that could then bring up different things and it'd just be an opportunity to kind of draw together some thoughts i've had as a an amateur wolfian as a super amateur wolfian indeed um with no great expertise but just my experiences to say these are some things i'm picking up and then and as i add both more reads and more rereads um this being apart from some short, short stories functioning my second reread having uh reread um shadow the torturer uh and i think just into glory of the conciliators that's something i'll probably get back to uh but yes as i add reads and rereads um and as i read more secondary material too because past that wolfian thing is the is the ongoing conversation of 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 the community which uh when you realize how much would never be realized about these books without the community um i think you see that there is a, a continuing active conversation this is by the way if you here's an interesting thing is wolf a postmodern author uh you will read and hear uh members of the community who'll push very much in favor of both postmodern readings of their own but also and by that i mean uh decentralized and um non-authoritative readings the idea that you know there's just all these different things you could say um or perhaps they think they are relatively authoritative but that they are subversive of what might be considered a, a an ordinary reading um but there's not just those readings but there's also a question about wolf's own intent um which is interesting i think for instance i would say that wolf is in many ways a straightforward author who I think means things often straightforwardly uh, and yet opens himself up to an esotericism because of uh, the way in which he communicates. And I think that's interesting. That's worth discussion, isn't it? You know, it, what are the arguments for the fact that really he is also in on the joke and to what degree is it that uh, we, that the continued process of claiming Wolf um, includes mutating him and changing him uh, in a way that, may be considered uh, authentic or might be considered um pro you know problematic disrespectful i think that's all interesting i mean it, it's uh, uh there's so many different features of talking about wolf both thematically um and uh, stylistically and programmatically that um you know I, I think probably the more voices involved the better and so in a small way i hope to to contribute to that um just to i think i will just have the quickest of checks uh, for where have I put it? So yeah, um, yeah. The narrator, nature, super nature, virtue, style. Those are some ideas I've got, and I will probably put something together, maybe on style, because I think style is one where um, perhaps it uh, it it requires a little less immediate expertise. You know, it can be something taken from having read uh, just the majority of his work rather than um requiring the expertise of many years rereading the same books uh, but style is an interesting one i think i'll start there i've talked about it a bit in the substack 
Uh, I'll probably link that in the comment in the description. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, starting with style and then moving on to some of those big questions around things like narration and nature and supernature, um, which I think are probably different discussions actually. If you've got other ideas for big thematic or programmatic or stylistic discussions in Wolf, um, I would love to hear them. I may or may not do them, uh, but uh, certainly they'll be good. If there are resources uh, that you can think of that really address a lot of this directly n n uh, in terms of, you know, addressing big headings, topics, in Wolf, um, then I might have heard them, but I, I probably haven't. So please, please comment and link those as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see when I get that going. Probably sometime in February, probably next month. So once a month might be a good objective, but I could see there might sometimes be a, a point of needing to step back and think, do I have enough insight into this? You know. So uh, yeah, don't want to promise too much, but probably something in in February on that. Um, and yeah, I will leave that there. Tell me what you think. And I'll see you next time.